And when you look to a driver like Lando Norris, who was a part of that Carlin Jr. structure for a long time, had a lot of success in, in Formula 2 when he was competing with Albon and, and Russell there. Could you tell from the first time you kind of were working with him and his telemetry, his style around the track, that there was a sort of, you know, like, a, like an intangible uh, skill there that you just feel like someone has that speed, that kind of imperceptible whatever magic dust it is that can make someone go quickly. Is that something you're always able to perceive when you first meet a young driver or is it something that can come out over time? Yeah, I think, you know, Lando's speed was never in doubt. There's lots of drivers over time. You know, if you look at, at the junior formula that, that actually have exceptional speed, exceptional speed is, is very much one segment of, of the umbrella. I mean, look at Colton Herter, his teammate that year in F4. I mean, on his day, he, he was quicker than Lando and, and Lando would be the first to, to sort of compliment Colton on, on his ability and his, his natural speed over a lap. The difference between Colton and Lando at that moment was consistency. And, and that consistency doesn't just come from a tech and tack perspective. It comes from all of the pillars that I've just been talking about, that sort of personal development and, and that sort of understanding of self, that ability to recognise how you go about being the best that you can be every single minute of every single day. So there's a relentless wave of professionalism from Lando, whereas there was a very, very raw natural talent from Colton. Colton didn't have that personal development yet. He didn't have that structure around him. And he he's... Um, you know he's he's developed into a, a very accomplished driver. He's still learning, but but Lando still has that ability to be very very quick all the time, and you know that is down to him. And also, you must credit the people that Lando had around him. So absolutely, yeah, a wonderful support team, but not a support team who shape Lando into being a certain way, which is something that we haven't talked about. It's very common in motorsport that we hero worship those that have gone before us. So Max Verstappen, now every young driver and parent is studying how Max Verstappen did it. We've got to shape our young boy or girl into Max Verstappen because that's that's how, how it's got to be. Whereas actually the team around Lando were encouraging him to be himself were helping him explore what works for him and giving him space to do it. You know, very much like Lewis Hamilton, he was afforded years of learning. He wasn't just rushed into certain environments. He did two years. He was afforded that opportunity to grow and develop, understand himself, find his feet, grow his confidence. And, and that has to be down to the, the support team. And, and that's a wonderful example of actually a, a, a parent trusting the professionals around yeah, the definitely. child and, and, and actually those professionals being very, very accomplished when it comes to what's required. Um, and so, yeah, really good case study there. The, the whole Lando case study is, is a really strong one. It's no surprise to see him doing what he's doing and he just treats it as though you know he's the same <laughs> yeah he's he's brilliant i i love him i think his character um and just the the way there were so many sort of i think it it's also something that lewis definitely was influential in in changing and that the stereotype of a formula one driver how they should present in front of the media all these rules that you feel are completely unfairly imposed on on people that should really be allowed to be themselves but whether it's the sponsors wanting, you know, reliable value, they want the same face to say the same thing about whatever brand is on the car. There's been a real change there where now I think the brands have kind of understand it, that personal ability, that charisma and that close relationship with the drivers is actually going to be more valuable for the sponsors yeah. and it's going to increase the popularity. It was based on compliance for so long. And it wasn't always like that. You know, you go back to the sort of 80s, early 90s, but but then we went through this period of professionalism, at, at sort of two decades, where everyone became sort of a cheese sandwich, you know, <laughs> very bland and and, yeah. uh, and and underpinned by compliance. Whereas now you've got drivers showing their 
personalities and if you listen to other sports when you when you hear men and women who have gone into England environments be it rugby or football or cricket they're like crikey I've been picked for England I've I've got to behave in a certain way and that's not behave in terms of off the the field it's like I've, I've got to be an England player on the field and then all of a sudden you, you you put all this pressure on your shoulders and actually all you've got to be is the individual that they picked yeah. does that make sense and and, and yeah. so many people lose sight of that they tighten up they become a figure of their former self their form drops they're lost in terms of understanding why they're unhappy off the field that they're, they're miserable on the field it, you know and it's, a, it's it's a sort of a a big dark black hole but uh but lando's very very good at actually just being himself 